bridges, you know, gaps in between, and um, their limo was going... And by the time they got from one side to the other, Barry Gibb had written half of Jive Talking. Wow. And he was actually sitting in the limo at the time, and uh, that sort of impressed me, you know, just being a music nut as I am. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so, yeah, I just love those sort of stories. Yeah, so yeah. I've got to chatting with uh, Stewie, it was uh, the guitarist from Noiseworks, but he was also um, Johnny uh, Farnham's guitarist um, for the You're the Voice album and, and, you know, a few others after that. He still, yep. still plays with them. And it's funny because he was telling a story too. He, he, he's a, a typical Muso story. Um, he said he was doing some of the, the Idol um, stuff as well down in Melbourne. Um, Australian Idol? Yeah, Australian Idol, okay. you know, in the, in the back of He said he'll get a three-month block out, right, to do that, or because Johnny Farnham's not really touring much uh, anymore at all. He'll get a three-month block out to do that. He sits on his ass the rest of the time and goes, well, where's my next gig, you know? So even though they might be playing for the best artists in the country, you know, they sit at home a lot of the time uh, twiddling their thumbs because... You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the, 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 yeah. Where's not, the next job coming from? Yeah, yeah, where's the next job? And I think it affects us all in, in that respect. Um, so I'm kind of lucky that, as I said, playing with Cole Finley now, he, he's picked me up. We've just done Tamworth, which is very successful for us. And we've got a lot of stuff. We've got a big bash coming up in um, – oh, we've got lots of gigs coming up. But the big bash in July, which is out in Birdsville, you know, got everyone from the Angels to Chisel to – you know, Barnsley to uh, goes on, and Lee Koenig and to all the biggest artists in Australia, yeah. all, all playing on this concert. And people come from miles, you know, like oh, yeah. thousands they, of miles. They have to, to, to go to Birdsville. To, oh, yeah, yeah, to go and camp there for this weekend. It's a huge do, you know. Hey, so back in, back in the day when you you did uh, a lot of gigs with ACDC, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. What yeah, did yeah. um, what did that mean for you though? Like uh, well, traveling if, around in a no, in look, an old Falcon, funny. or you know what I mean? What, no, it's funny for it. You got you got to kind of take it from the perspective of what it was. Now, we with the band Finch, we'd started probably a year or so before ACDC, Chisel and Angels. You know, they're the three bands basically we played with a lot. Um, now, they used to come to Sydney and support us and we go to Sydney or Adelaide and support them until they become that big. But, you know, Finch basically split up in 76, I think it was, and those bands all started to... Keep going, you know, what was started, that like? started to make it. What was that like? I, I remember doing yeah. goat gigs with a powder finger and then bang, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah, of course, you know. It was just a mad scene, but it was all rock and roll back then. We used to go to Melbourne, stay there for months at a time in a place called Freeway Gardens that ACDC used to live there. So, you know, we... Uh, did, you, did, you, did you think they were great? Like, uh, you know, well, No, was, they were just fellow like... musos. We'd all go out together. Some crazy things. We'd all go out together and go to a restaurant and, you know, we, we sort of get put in the VIP area or something, you know, because for some odd reason. And the you know, little things like Angus um, would only ever eat sweets. You know, he never ate a proper meal. And all his fans used to bring along blocks of chocolate. You know, this is a pretty well-known fact back then. That's all he ate is chocolate wow. and sweets. Wow. He had never seen him eat a decent meal and he was a teetotaler as well back then. So just these little sort of things that kind of odd. Yeah, I know. Kind of odd. Uh... Yeah. yeah it just Pete was crazy. telling me the story on the way in, in the van uh, this afternoon that um, about uh, when ACDC, um, uh, oh, he was talking about professionalism when, um, you know, within a couple of songs, um, you know, broke how many strings on the oh, yeah, guitars? Oh, yeah, so I went out with them one time to a gig in sale because, you know, sometimes we'd have a night off, so go and travel with them. And, and um, just hanging around in the audience and, and watching them. Uh, each guitarist broke two strings, the bass player broke a string and, and the front of house PA broke down. They never flinched. They just kept playing, rocking away till the roadie brought in another guitar and they'd throw the guitar off their shoulder, throw the other one on and kept playing. Like, they didn't even look sideways while they were doing it. And I thought, that really, that stuck in my mind because that's the professionalism, you know, of, of what they were and why they are like they are now. Um, the same thing with the PA broke down and the, just the fallback was working. Bon Scott was still singing his ass off. Um, you could still hear him down the back of the hall, over the top of the band. Just like busking, like, re- yeah, he like just, honest he just, entertainment. He just kept going and he's got such a, a forceful voice that he just kept going. Now, here's another thing, a um, little story about ACDC. This is why you've, you put us back on air because there's look, so many of those old rock and roll yeah, stories. Yeah, everyone wants to, you know. Playing out west, uh, where was it, uh, Stardust Room in, in Sydney, 
um, Western Suburbs, and playing with uh, Swanee out there. And um, funny enough, uh, Barnsley arrived out there, he, you know, to see his brother. So he's at backstage, so we got him up to sing, and he had his new girlfriend there, which I actually went out with a couple of times. So just, <laughs> <laughs> Jane. So I kind of know that, know that family back then and haven't really had any connection with them since, you know, those days. Um, but, yeah, Chisel, we used to stay, stay in lots of motels with Chisel and play soccer together out in the car park. And, you know, I was always the goalkeeper and with Swanee and, of course, we'd always win because, yeah, you know, we wouldn't let the goals through. But, um, anyhow, Barnsley's got up and started singing with Swanee. And next thing you know, uh, Bonds walked on stage. And it was two weeks before, because uh, the next day he went back to England, two weeks before he died. So I kind of, you know, I look back and think I was the last one to have a blow with, with, um, with, with Bon in, 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 Australia. in Australia. And you could hear, you know, Swanee's going, oh, 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 and then Barnes is going, oh, 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 and then way above that, Bon's going, <laughs> I couldn't even wow. think about. And I, that made me realise the scope of Bon's voice back then. Because I never, I just thought he was a rough rock and roll singer, you know. And like you say to me, or oh, how was it working with ACDC back then? They were just a rough rock and roll band, you know. But I look back and think, wow, the scope of his voice and the and the range. Yeah, but he was he was um, prior he, to um, ACDC was in the Valentines and so on. He used to actually sing oh, yeah. harmonies and oh, yeah, yeah. 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 A lot of, of people don't realise that, of course. But yeah. just to see the three of them together and see why he became so popular. Is from that defining moment for me. He just outdid Barnsley and Swanee. And now Swanee's got a great voice. Yeah. Barnsley can really screech it like the best, but Bond just overshadowed oh. them. Well, it's a testament and, whenever, you, um, whenever you try and sing an ACDC song, it's really hard. <laughs> Be it Brian or Bond, yeah. it's near impossible for probably 80% of us. You know? I'll tell you, no, you wanted a bawdy story? Please. All right. All right. <laughs> Let me take my pants off. <laughs> Uh, I was threatening to write a book one day about all these funny stories that you don't really ever hear, you know, in the in mainstream. But um, we'd all gone out to a pub one day and, uh, and I'll say his name. It was Pat. I won't say his second name. Pat was one of the roadies for um, um, ACDC at the time. And he never did – I never saw him do much work with him, you know. I said, well, how come you got this guy in your crew? He said, well, he keeps us all amused. He's the funniest bloke we have, you know, we've ever met. And he did. He used to do the, uh, uh, the, the nude strut across the stage, in, uh, the chicken strut or whatever they called it, in, in front of the ACDC, if anybody's out there who probably remembers that, right? Um, so he just kept them amused. And... and we go, no, you've got to be kidding, Pat. But that was just Pat. He was just a crazy dude. He apparently played, he was six foot seven or whatever he played for St Kilda in the early days and just a mad bucket he's funny as a hat for assholes did he go overseas oh, with them freaking hell he's he probably an accountant dude. now <laughs> you know what I mean one of these weirdos that yeah. I mean they're just some of the crazy <laughs> stories Runs a retirement that, village <laughs> yeah yeah the crazy yeah. things that happen on tour you know um, another one like well this is, this is what I was saying I had the, um, the girls from the Miss Mate here uh-huh. they, they, and they you know they walk it like they talk it they were in the, in Nidacris, that great band back mm. in the day. Mm. This is the thing. Back in that day, there was no photos on cameras and phones, no, and no, no, there no. was uh, whatever happened in the room was the whatever happened. Whatever like, happens on yeah. tour stays on oh, tour. <laughs> big time. That can't happen anymore. No, it's a, that's unfortunate. But uh, speaking of the mismade, uh, G'day Rexy, if you're listening to this, by the way. Mwah. <laughs> A good friend of mine, not only on Facebook, but she's also plays band in my band in my son's uh, band called Angel Awake. So it's a, yeah, a bit of a family sort of history there, if you like. Well, sort of family. Excellent. That's a great Rexy. coincidence. How are you going? Isn't it? Great yeah. coincidence. Well, another funny thing, we were on tour with Dragon. Finch was supporting Dragon. For three months, we were on a bus together. You can imagine it. And uh, Mark M was a real, real lunatic back then. Um, there's just so many little stories about that tour itself, but... We were staying on Magnetic Island. We had three days off. And at the end of that, we had $8,500 worth of damage we'd done because we were hiring all these mini mokes and um, 
you know, get them bogged in the beach when the tides come up. And one got bogged up in the mountains, he couldn't get it back again. The tour manager had hired a horse and the horse bolted on him and took off up the mountains. So all this <laughs> stuff is going on. Now, one night we'd gone round for a, um, uh, a bit of a beach party around the other side of the island and we were staying at Magnetic Village on uh, Magnetic... Um, uh, uh, Mediterranean Village on Magnetic That's Island. That's obviously Whitsunday Island, right, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah off Townsville. Yeah, okay. And uh, so we'd all go around to this beach and the, the roadies have found this little rowboat and so they've rowed out to this half-sunken ship. They've come back with all this booze. We're going, oh, this is all right. And it was the old Cadman's boating restaurant that they'd towed up there and they were going to resurrect it, but it was like half sunk. So they've, they've pitched all these beers off it and all this power report and stuff. So we're all on the beach party on and carrying on. <coughs> but, um, anyhow, so one of the locals comes down because we were all, all acting up too much and he's chasing us all off, go on, get the hell out of here, you're making too much noise and blah. So we'd all taken off in these mini makes. And Mark, Are you saying that the Cadman's re- floating restaurant just sunk? It's still well, alcohol. it was half sunk, yeah, and it's still full of... In that box down there is my grandma's eight-millimetre uh, tape over there, and I just went through it, right, got it transferred, blah, 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 and here's the Cadman's... Uh, and I Google searched, and I just heard this story. Wow. Go. Yeah, okay. In, uh, yes. <laughs> okay. I'm going to edit that out. So, <laughs> all right, they're all drunk. So what they've done with this little rowboat, they've tied up the back of the, one of the mini makes, you know, they've, they've brought it in. So this guy's chased us off the beach and we're all taken off in the mini mokes up the road. Mark Hunter's driving this mini moke that's got the boat that he's towing behind it, right, with the motor bouncing up and down the road. <laughs> off up the road we go and he's, you know, towing this little rowboat, you know, on the, on the gravel Just road. Just invincible rock stars. Yeah, on the, on the gravel road and everything. So that was another part of the build. That we it, so, so locals no doubt would have gone, oh, these rock and rollers. Yeah, yeah. You know, now, sort of you get away with it a little bit. Apparently they have these full moon parties up there at, 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 at these places and the locals hate it because all these doof parties and all their drug taking and all this yeah. stuff and they, all these hundreds of, hundreds of hundreds of people come from Townsville just to go out to the island. The, to these rave parties and stuff, you know. Yep. But yeah, well, I kind of think we started all. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. S- sort of trend, mate. <laughs> As, that was around about nineteen seventy eight, seventy nine, when the band had turned into contraband. And um, oh, it, it, another story there: the coppers had, uh, had come across from Townsville, right, and they got with the public and got us all aside on the on the third day and said, "Look, guys, you just got to." Calm down a bit, you know, you're all going a bit haywire here. So Mark Evans, of course, uh, having been with ACDC at the time, he's a bit of a pool shark, and then the keyboard player from Dragon was also a pool shark. So they, you know, that all sort of went down. Then, oh, we'll play a couple of games of pool, you know, to the copper and the public. And, and so they started playing them, and they started losing, obviously, you know, on purpose, and started spiking their beers, you know, just playing for beers and spiking their beers with vodka each time. And after about half a dozen, uh, you know, schooners of that, you know, oh, let's play for money, you know, and these guys, yeah, okay, yeah, they figured, yeah, we've eaten these, you know, these these young musos. And they got a, uh, they end up winning 1500 bucks each out of the copper and the, <laughs> <laughs> and, and the publican. So he'd gone back to town with his tail between his legs, you know, and the boys were like, <laughs> 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 I mean, truly, we, we're... Life, spend a life on the road playing pool, you know, every gig you go into, you yeah, play a game pool the in the tricks. afternoon, you know all the tricks. And, uh, Someone told me recently that, that if you take, um, oh, back in the day, like uh, a lot of bands would stay in the same sort of rooms in the same hotels, it was kind of, yeah, especially yeah. with an agency booked thing, yeah. and uh, a lot of the, uh, the road uh, stage managers, or, you know, stage tech or whatever, you, a lot of the f- picture frames on the wall were screwed in with a Phillips head. You take it off, and everyone had signed the back of um, uh, the Frodo's, or you know, leave messages, and and um, I only heard that. I don't even know whether it's real. Oh, but I like be. to think it is. Oh, I haven't heard that one before. That's haven't a good one, All yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, next time sure. you're on tour, mate. <laughs> but we on that dragon tour, we got chased out of so many towns. It was like, you know, somebody would be rooting the, the the local mayor's daughter or something, and he'd get wind of it, you know, and. Yeah. So they come to the gig and say, right, you guys are all got to get on the bus at the end of the gig, straight into the bus, and you're out of town. So, of course, we do a few, quite a few overnighters back then. <laughs> the, Those days and, are gone, Cal. Yeah. They're seriously gone. 
You can't get away with that anymore. Uh, there's a few bands around, I'm pretty sure, do it actually still these days. Uh, right? uh, but the, we just don't hear about it. Yeah.